The story begins with one of our protagonists, Kazuki waking up after he did a high-calorie workout last night with the woman. He is not in any relationship with her, he just needed a way to get the data through her ID. After obtaining the data, he apologizes to the girl for playing with her feelings and heads to his home. Kazuki Kurusu is a 28-year-old assassin who has teamed up with Rei Soa for their assassin jobs. On one side, where Kazuki is more of an extrovert type who loves to spend his money on casinos and gorgeous women, on the other side, Rei is more of a shut-in type who usually stays home and spends his money playing various types of video games. For the past three years, Kazuki and Rei have been working together as an assassin. During their jobs, Kazuki serves as the brains, in charge of developing plans and executing hacking tasks, while Rei implements his gaming skills into real-life situations. One day on Christmas Eve, Kazuki arrives home only to see the house is yet again completely messed up. He scolds Rei for playing games all the time and not helping in cleaning the house. On seeing the cat, Kazuki tells Rei he has told him many times not to bring Stray inside. It requires routine feeding and grooming, which they can't do. Kazuki puts the cat in a box, hoping it will find someone better than them who can actually commit to taking care of it. After tidying up the house, washing the clothes, and making breakfast, he notices that Rei's mood is off because of the cat. Kazuki reminds him that their line of work doesn't guarantee their lives. They can die anytime, and the cat would have gone stray again. And for now, they have to focus on their new job. At night, for the job, they buy Santa Claus outfits, a lot of flour, and later go to a cafe where the manager named Q gives him the payment from their recent job. On his way, two gorgeous women, Carol and Dorothy, express how alone they have been and request him to come inside. At first, Kazuki tries to refuse, but seeing how much they are requesting, he goes in to have some fun. In the end, he ends up losing everything including his clothes. Realizing how cold it is, he goes to check on the cat and is glad to see it's taken. The following day is the day to execute the plan. The target is a major broker named Hayami, who deals in human trafficking. Usually, it's hard for them to track him down as he keeps on moving from one country to another, but today he has a Christmas party organized on the top floor of a hotel which is heavily guarded. According to the info provided by Q, they know he and his wife love sweet things and that's why using this chance, they are going to infiltrate using a cake. Somewhere in the city, a little girl named Miri arrives and starts asking location of a particular hotel. On her way, she writes her wish requesting Santa to let her meet her papa. In the evening, it's the time to execute the plan. Kazuki while carrying the gifts approaches the lift. The guards stop him and ask for the invitation letter. Kazuki tells them he is here to deliver the cake, but the guards aren't aware of it. So as planned, he dials a number and hands the phone to them. Q, cloning Hayami's wife, yells at the guards to let the cake guy in, or she'll hammer their nuts. The guards in panic, apologize, and after thoroughly inspecting Kazuki, they let him enter the elevator. Just then, Miri enters the hotel and notices the cake. She is excited and ends up entering the elevator. Kazuki in a state of confusion tells Rei about a kid in the elevator. Miri can see how tasty the cake looks and requests if she can eat it. Kazuki allows her, and Miri starts eating it. Seeing how much she is enjoying it, Kazuki doesn't stop her. After eating it, Miri asks Santa if he is here to fulfill her wish about her wanting to see her papa. Hearing this, Kazuki sees a glimpse of his past. Miri hasn't met her father since she was born, and her mother told her she could find him here that's why she came looking for him. Kazuki decides to help Miri to look for her father after completing the job. So he promises, as Santa he will grant her wish only if she closes her eyes and stays in the corner. Miri immediately agrees. But as the top floor arrives, she forgets about the promise and just leaves. The guard points the gun at Kazuki, demanding who she was. However, they are taken out by Rei. Kazuki goes after Miri and barely manages to save her from the gunshots. Now that the guards are alerted, Rei proceeds while dodging the bullets and eventually taking down the guards. After breaking through the door, everyone is in a panic and starts evacuating. In this whole chaos, 
Miri is asking strangers if they are her papa. Rei charges at Hayami, but a guard comes and starts firing. While Rei and Kazuki are taking cover, Miri goes to Hayami, asking if he is her papa. However, he grabs her and points the gun at her. Rei asks if he can shoot the target through the girl, but Kazuki says, definitely not. Kazuki gets an idea. While holding the tray, he blocks the bullets, and Rei takes care of the guard. After this, Kazuki tells Miri he is not the Santa but her papa. Rei shoots Hayami's leg, and as the grip loosens, Miri jumps. Kazuki catches her, and finally, Rei headshots Hayami. After this, Rei leaves through the window, and Kazuki disguises as a party attendee. Together with Miri, he escapes from the hotel and meets up with Rei. At home, while Miri is sleeping, they find some photos in her bag and are stunned to see that the person they killed was Miri's father. The next day, Miri is banging heavily at the door, telling her papa that she wants to go pee. At first, Kazuki tries to process who this girl is, but when he remembers, he grabs her and throws her inside the toilet. However, the seat is too high for Miri, and she asks for uppies. Afterwards, while Kazuki is making breakfast, Miri gets excited to see the egg cracking and wants to do it as well, but Kazuki refuses. Miri wants to break them and tries to bring a chair, but it's too heavy for her, and it ends up falling over. Hearing all the noise, Rei comes out. Kazuki hands Miri over to Rei and tells him to deal with her until he makes the breakfast. Miri asks if he is her papa too, but Rei refuses, saying he isn't. After the breakfast is made, Miri takes a bite and finds it delicious. Rei asks why pets aren't allowed and kids are. Kazuki assures him he is going to send her back but first needs to know who her mother is. From the bag, they find out that Miri is the daughter of Hayami and his mistress, Misaki. When Hayami found out Misaki was pregnant with his child, he left her. After so many years, Misaki wanted Hayami to accept his responsibility, and that's why she sent Miri here. But now that they have killed her father, they have no other choice but to take Miri to her mother. So first, they need to get Misaki's address. As Rei is about to smoke, Kazuki tells him to do it near the range hood. After this, Kazuki asks Miri where she came from. Miri shares how she came here but doesn't know the name of the place from where she came or the train she took. Hearing this, Kazuki finds it's a miracle that Miri was able to reach the hotel with no harm. But now, with no information about where she came from, they have no other choice but to ask Q for information. As Miri tries to climb up, she ends up spilling the coffee, and Kazuki starts to panic, checking if she is alright. Thankfully Miri is fine and quickly changes her dress. They turn on the TV for her and head to the cafe. There, Q, with a pissed look, congratulates them for making it on the news. He warns them to be careful, or else they will be replaced. Q gives them their payment and another job. After this, without disclosing anything about Miri, Kazuki asks Q if their target had any kids. Q denies having such information. Without trying to call his research skills bad, Kazuki asks if there might be a mistake in the research. Q looks at Ray's face and suspects something is wrong. He says it's possible he might have missed some info, so he will take another look. At night, while eating dinner, Kazuki examines the details of the next job and prepares a plan. The target is a drug dealer who has a mansion that is heavily guarded. This time they have to quietly assassinate the target, or else Q will really dispose them. Just then, Miri comes and says it's not the same hamburger as her mama's. Kazuki proudly says, after all, it's made from A-grade ground beef. However, despite this, Miri insists that her mama's hamburgers are better. Kazuki is devastated. The following day, Kazuki hacks into a company's server and obtains a fake identity for himself. On the other side, Rei acquires some diving suits. When it's time to go, Miri seeing them leaving insists on coming as well. However, Kazuki bribes her with a lot of snacks and while she is busy, they try to sneak out but she sees them and starts crying requesting them to take her as well. As neighbors begin to find something suspicious, with no other choice, they decide to take Miri with them. The mansion is surrounded by armed guards and cameras, and if the front gate is sealed, their only way of escape is through water, 
where Rei has already arrived. As Kazuki is about to enter, Miri starts pressing the horn because she needs to use the restroom. Kazuki tells her to wait for some more time and quickly goes inside the mansion, disguising himself as a technician. He makes an excuse, saying their company spotted some trouble with their anti-theft system and he has come to check it. After the guard inspects him, Kazuki goes to the surveillance room, where he swiftly knocks down the operator. Following this, he takes out the various bombs he has brought, and while avoiding the guards, he strategically plants them throughout the house. Soon after, someone rings the doorbell, and it's Mary. After using the restroom, Kazuki sees her and starts freaking out. As Mary spots her papa, the guard also sees him and demands what he is doing here. Suddenly Mary runs away, so Kazuki goes after her, and other guards come after him. He deploys the traps and follows Mary inside a room where the target is. He is so focused on catching her, that he doesn't even realize the situation he is in. The owner orders his guards to kill them, but just then, Rei starts taking down the guards one by one. While Rei is giving the cover, Kazuki runs towards Rei and while grabbing him and Miri he escapes. On the boat, he scolds Miri for doing something so risky that could have cost her life. Miri apologizes and promises she won't do it ever again. After a tiresome day, Miri is asleep, and Kazuki realizes they can't do work if she is around. They receive a call from Q, who congratulates them for messing up the job. He tells them they are off the job as it has been given to another assassin. As for the research he did on Hayami, he found out he had a girl with a mistress. So he tells Kazuki to visit the cafe tomorrow for the details. After this, at night we see that at the mansion, the hitman Q gave the job to, has single-handedly taken down every single guard along with the target. The following day, Miri respectfully wakes up Ray. Unlike other days, today's breakfast is not very fancy because Miri wanted to eat the cereals her mother used to give her. Ray has never tried it, but when he eats it he also finds it amazing. Seeing their reaction makes Kazuki a bit annoyed. Miri climbs up and attempts to grab a banana, but Kazuki teases her. Seeing how much Kazuki is enjoying it, Ray asks if he truly wants to send her back. Despite his desires, Kazuki understands that their world is too dark for someone as innocent as Miri to live in. The scene shifts to the cafe where Kazuki apologizes for their recent failed mission. Q is quite upset but assures him that the job has been done. Regarding the information he requested, Q asks for the reason he needs it. Kazuki lies, saying that Hayami left a doll for his mistress's daughter, and he wants to deliver it to her. Q suspects something is wrong but doesn't say anything. The scene shifts to the park, where Miri presents a dumpling she made and asks her papa to eat it. Kazuki freaks out and tells her never to say papa in public again. Miri promises she will not. While Kazuki goes to buy something, Miri plays on the swing. A guard approaches her and inquires if she is alone. Miri says she is with him. The guard asks Ray if he is her father, but Ray denies he isn't. When asked if he is related to her in any way, Ray again refuses. Hearing this, Miri is surprised. Just then, Kazuki comes running. The guard asks if the kid is with him. Kazuki assures he is her father and tells Miri to confirm it. However, she doesn't say it, because earlier he told her not to. In the end, Miri calls him Papa and the guard is convinced. On the way, Kazuki tells Miri that in such situations, she can call him Papa. He also urges Rei to handle such situations by telling everyone he is her Papa. At night, before going to bed, Miri wants to sleep with Kazuki Papa, but he refuses. So Miri then goes to Rei's room, but he isn't there. She goes to the bathroom and finally finds him. She asks him why he sleeps here, and Ray replies that it is for when someone ambushes. Mary doesn't understand it, but insists on sleeping here, so Ray won't be alone and won't get scared by ghosts. Mary has never seen Ray smile, so she encourages him to smile, but Ray doesn't know how to. He wasn't raised like that. The following day, they all head to Mary's mother's location. On the way, Ray once again asks Kazuki if he really wants to send Mary back. Kazuki says it's the best for everyone, but Ray can see, he is lying. After some time, they arrive at the location. 
Kazuki first goes by himself while Rei and Miri stay in the car. He finds the pub and sees Misaki singing. Misaki on seeing a customer tells him to leave as the, the pub is closed until night. But just then, the owner comes and slaps Misaki for bringing a client without his permission. Kazuki leg sweeps him and the owner gets angry. He grabs a broken bottle and lands a cut. Kazuki gets pissed and punches him. After the owner leaves, Misaki slaps Kazuki, asking how dare he touch her man. She tells him to sit while she treats his cut. Afterwards, she asks the reason he has come here. Kazuki tells her about Miri. But Misaki doesn't care about Miri anymore because she is just a mistake. Her father got her pregnant and left her without a bit of compensation. She can't even afford her own living, let alone a kid. Kazuki furiously asks how on earth it's Mary's fault. As much as her father, she as her mother, is equally responsible. When a kid is born, it's the parent's duty to protect them. Hearing this, Misaki laughs and asks how someone like him can know this. He doesn't seem to have ever raised a kid, so Misaki tells him to shut up. Hearing this, Kazuki sees a glimpse of his past. After this, he doesn't say anything further and just leaves. On the other side, Miri is getting bored, so she forces Rei to come with her and have some fun. Rei doesn't want to, but after a lot of persuasion, he agrees. But throughout the time, he has a dead serious face. After having a lot of fun, Miri says they are going to have fun tomorrow as well. Rei asks why she calls Kazuki her papa when he is not. Miri is a bit confused but then says, Papa are those who save you from trouble. However, Rei didn't grow up with such. From a young age, he was forced to cast away his emotions and was told by his father that he was not his family but his boss. By the time he comes back to his senses, he notices Miri has gone missing. He goes to search for her and finds her with the police who are asking for her parents' names and home address. Ray decides to let them handle her and is about to leave when Miri calls Ray her papa and cries for help. Ray remembers Miri's words and tells the police to let go of her. The police ask if he is her guardian, but Ray refuses. They ask if he is her babysitter, but Ray again refuses. He says he is her papa. Miri breaks free and tightly hugs Ray. Afterwards, they meet up with Kazuki and ask what the situation is. Kazuki smiles and says, let's have a dinner for three. At home, Kazuki makes hamburgers using cheap steak, Miri said, and they turn out to be incredibly tasty. At night, Miri wants to sleep together. And with her being stubborn, both of them have to agree. The next morning, when Ray is working out, Miri messes up his treadmill. After this, she goes to Kazuki and has fun messing around with the detergent. Later, she goes to the kitchen and also messes up there. Throughout the day, she ends up making so much mess that both Kazuki and Rei are exhausted. They can't do their job if Miri is causing so much trouble. Just then, they notice a daycare bus and realize what they should do. At home, they start looking for potential daycares nearby. Kazuki calls the daycares one by one, but they all refuse because they have to first go to the government office. Kazuki is frustrated as to why he needs to go to the government office. On arriving at the government office, they receive a reception number and wait until their turn comes. After an hour of waiting, their turn finally comes. However, there is so much paperwork and so many documents required that Kazuki's soul is ready to leave his body. At home, he is frustrated because how on earth are they supposed to show their source of income when it's assassinating people? Kazuki is about to discard the idea of letting Miri join the daycare, but Miri headbutts him and says she wants to go to the daycare. With no other choice, Kazuki decides to forge an identity. With this, they again go to the office and finally get approved. After this, they proceed to the daycare, where they have an interview. At first, there was some trouble because both Kazuki and Rei were listed as Miri's fathers. But this is a modern age, so the teacher proceeds. When asked about her fathers, Miri ends up saying all sorts of things they do, from forging identities to killing people with their guns. She ends up saying so much that they eventually have to leave. On the way to the next daycare, Kazuki tells Miri what she should say from now on. At the second daycare, Ana-sensei finds it a bit weird to see all of them having different family names, 
but somehow Kazuki gives an answer, and the teacher is satisfied. She asks about their occupation, and Kazuki replies that they do a lot of cleaning in the city. When asked Miri if she loves her papas, on seeing how much she loves them, Ana-sensei accepts her in the daycare. At night, now that one problem is solved, the next one is to buy things for Miri. So the following day, they go to a luxurious store. Kazuki wants to make sure Miri's first impression is the best, so for that, they have to establish dominance by having her wear top-branded dresses. When the shopping is done, the next thing is that they have to write Miri's name on all of her stuff. Because there is so much they bought, he spends the entire night doing it. The following day, they finally make it to the daycare. As they enter the daycare, every parent is gossiping about them in the group chat because they look rich. After everything, they bid goodbye to Miri and leave. After hours, when the daycare is over, they go to pick up Miri. Kazuki asks if the first day was fun, but Miri replies she doesn't know. The next day, she says it's not as fun as she thought it would be. And for the next few days, Miri's mood just plummets. So finally Kazuki goes to Ana-sensei asking what's the matter. Ana-sensei asks if he didn't read the note she wrote in Miri's notebook. Kazuki replies that he didn't. So she explains that because of Miri's fancy clothes, other children feel cautious around her or else it will get dirty. She requests Kazuki to buy ordinary clothes that the children can get dirty. Kazuki understands the issue, and the next day, they go to buy normal clothes. And the things are so incredibly cheap that all of them end up buying a lot of other stuff as well. The following day, on Mama's bike, Kazuki drops Miri at the daycare. To help give a little push, he shows off his tricks, and the children find Miri's father amazing. They ask if they can play as well and Miri says definitely. Eventually, Miri starts enjoying herself again. After an incredibly fun day, when they arrive home, Miri receives a present. It's her own room. Miri is very happy and thanks her papas for it. The following day, Kazuki is in a state of despair. In the last month, they had too much expenditure and mostly it was on Miri. If they don't receive any job, they will soon go bankrupt. So with no other choice, Kazuki begs Q to get them a job. Q agrees and hands over the target's info. With one week of time limit, as they are developing a plan, Kazuki receives a notice from daycare about a temporary closure. For the next whole week, Miri will be staying home. Learning from their past experience, Kazuki is hesitant to take her with them to their job, but at the same time, he cannot leave Miri alone in the home. Which means one of them has to stay with her while the other goes on the job. On hearing them talking about the jobs, Miri asks them what jobs they do. It's her homework, and she has to tell it to everyone in the class. Both of them doesn't want to answer and make an excuse. For the next few days, Kazuki and Ray pull some all-nighter and as a result, the house is a total mess. The following day, before heading to the cafe, Kazuki tells Ray to take care of Miri. As he is about to leave, Miri requests Kazuki to play with her, but he refuses and tells her to go ask Ray. After he leaves, Miri goes to Ray asking him to have some fun but he won't wake up. So Miri goes on an adventure to find out what Kazuki Papa does. Miri tries her best to follow him, but on her way, she comes across the eighth wonder and a dog, because of which she ends up getting distracted and loses her way. Back in the apartment, Ray wakes up and realizes Miri has gone missing. In the cafe, Kazuki is taking some advice from Q when he receives a call from Ray about Miri gone missing. He immediately goes home and together with Ray starts searching for her. On the other side, Miri on the way stumbles upon the assassin who he saw a few days ago. He doesn't do anything and just leaves. Even after searching for so much, Kazuki and Ray aren't able to find her. With no other choice, Kazuki decides to call the police. Most likely Miri is kidnapped so he can't risk wasting any more time. As they enter the cafe, they find Miri there. Hearing Miri calling them Papa, Q asks what's it all about. Kazuki begins to freak out. After Q goes to take care of a customer, using this chance, Kazuki tells Miri to not call them Papa in front of Q uncle. Miri understands it. After Q comes back, he demands an explanation. Kazuki lies that because they weren't getting any jobs, 
He and Ray took some babysitting jobs and came looking after her when she went missing. Q asks what about the job he gave them. Kazuki assures that it's going smoothly. Q then asks if it will be completed before the deadline, but Kazuki refuses and requests for some more time. He expresses they have been pulling off all-nighters for three days straight. Q understands the problem and asks what if the kid is out of the picture. Kazuki freaks out, but then Q tells them he will take care of her until they finish their work. At home, after packing all the things, Kazuki warns Miri to not say anything about them to Q uncle. After leaving her at the cafe, Q takes care of Miri by making her juice. On the other side, Kazuki wants to finish the job as quickly as possible or else who knows what Q might do to Miri. Back in the cafe, Miri, upon knowing he is her papa's friend, asks what job they do. Q tries to tell her it's a special job, like Kazuki being a stand-up comedian and Ray being a Middle Eastern oil baron. As they spend more time together, throughout the time Miri tries her best to not say papa, but sometimes almost ends up spilling out. Q asks if she doesn't want to go back to her home and if she is fine with being strangers. Without referring to them as Papa, Miri says it's fine because they are going to be together. Kazuki makes her tasty food and she plays video games with Rei. Q asks if she likes them, and Miri expresses very, very much. After some time, Kazuki and Rei arrive. While asleep, Miri ends up calling them Papa. Kazuki tries his best to cover it up but Q tells him he knows everything. The scene shifts to tomorrow. After Miri's daycare activity, they all go to the cafe, where Kazuki and Ray finally receive their payment. Q knew about Miri from the very start. He tells them that their world doesn't allow having kids or a family. After spending time with her, he can understand why they have become so attached to her. However, their lives are constantly at risk, and they can die anytime. But if they are ready to accept it and are committed to taking care of Miri, then he won't tell it to the organization. The next day, Kazuki looks at the news and sees how because of a famous actor's leniency, his son hurt somebody, and he is being questioned. Kazuki wonders if they are too lenient with Miri and if, in the future, she might end up becoming a delinquent. He can't imagine her acting badly and understands parental influence is important. So from now on he is going to be attentive. The scene shifts to daycare where there is information about a field trip. Ana sensei informs Kazuki about how Miri got into a fight with her classmate Taiga. She wasn't there to see, but the children said it was Miri who hit first. Ana sensei tried asking Miri to tell her the full details but she is not sharing properly. So she requests Kazuki to help in getting the truth. Kazuki assures her not to worry because he is here. At night, while Miri is playing Mario Kart with Rei, Kazuki asks if she had a fight. Miri refuses. He grabs her cheeks and tells her to tell him the truth, if she hit her friend or not. But Miri again refuses and says she didn't hit anyone. Kazuki raises his voice a bit and tells her he needs to understand who is at fault. She asks if he is mad at her. Kazuki refuses and says he needs to find the truth and discipline her. That's the job of Papa. But Miri again says she didn't do anything. She gets mad and says she hates him and leaves. Kazuki is devastated. The following day, Kazuki is putting his best efforts into making breakfast for the trip. Just then Miri wakes up. She only greets Ray and says she hates Kazuki Papa. And today she wants Ray Papa to drop her off at the daycare. After they leave, Kazuki is in a worry wondering what if their relationship worsens and she ends up becoming a delinquent. He soon notices her lunchbox and goes to give it to Miri, but is told by Ray that the bus has already left. So now, he decides to deliver it while making sure Ana Sensei doesn't see him. In the zoo, Miri and her friends are enjoying it very much, but a boy named Taiga is scaring every animal, which Miri and her friends don't like and tell him to go away. Taiga is pissed and goes somewhere else, Miri warns him it's dangerous to go alone, but when Taiga doesn't listen she goes after him. Kazuki and Rei have just arrived, but there is also a criminal on the loose. Back inside the zoo, everyone realizes they have lost, but Miri assures them it's fine and tells them to follow her. Kazuki, like a professional, is keeping an eye on Miri and notices a boy holding her hand. 
He can't let the boy date his daughter, and is furious. As he follows them together with Ray, they are trying their best to make sure Miri doesn't see them. After walking for some time, Miri and others decide to rest for a while. Taiga spills his water, so Miri helps him. Hearing the boy's name is Taiga, Kazuki realizes he is the one who fought with Miri. However, now, seeing them so close, he wonders what's up. The man from earlier grabs one of the meals and is about to leave when Miri stops him and tells him to pay for it. He gets pissed, and as he is about to attack her, he is hit by a stone thrown by Ray, and soon the owner also comes. The criminal leaves the meal there and flees. As Miri and others continue searching for Ana Sensei, on the way, Taiga comes across a Mario Kart, and unknowing Miri also plays it with her father, he is amazed. Taiga starts asking questions about the game, and finds Miri's father amazing. Miri also says it's indeed true her Ray Papa is amazing. Hearing this, Kazuki and Ray are going through different emotions. As the kids continue to spend more time, some of them start to get hungry. So they sit to eat their lunch, but Miri finds out she forgot her lunch. As Kazuki is about to go, Ray pulls him inside. And then, Taiga shares his lunch with Miri. Miri is happy and tells everyone to let's eat together. But they refuse because Taiga would again be mean and steal their fried chicken. Taiga promises he won't do it again and apologizes for yesterday. The girls forgive him, and they eat lunch together. Just then, the criminal comes and threatens them to give their lunch to him. Taiga comes to the rescue, but the criminal grabs him. On seeing that she is the one from before, the criminal takes out a gun and threatens to kill her. But then, Kazuki and Ray disguised as alpaca and rabbit, threatens the criminal to leave the kids alone. As he points the gun at them, Kazuki easily takes the gun and Ray takes care of him. Miri and others thank them, and with this, they leave. Soon after, Ana sensei also finds them. Seeing Miri and Taiga made up, she is glad. On the way home, Kazuki realizes he got so worked up being her father that he didn't trust Miri. At home, when Miri arrives, she hugs Kazuki Papa and expresses how fun the trip was. After she goes to change her clothes, Kazuki reads a note left by Ana sensei and finds out that Miri only told Taiga to not be mean but accidentally hit him. Hearing this, Kazuki feels pathetic and apologizes to Miri for being a bad papa. Miri forgives him. The following day, it's raining heavily, and Kazuki is at the daycare to pick up Miri. As she comes to him, singing and enjoying herself, the umbrella flies away from her hand. Miri tries to go after the umbrella, but Kazuki stops her, and a truck goes past them. On seeing this, Kazuki again sees a glimpse of his past. Miri picks up the umbrella but is sad to see it's broken. As they arrive home, Kazuki asks for a towel from Rei but he won't listen because he is playing a game. Kazuki tells Miri to bathe first, and sees she has left the wet clothes on the floor. After lunch, he notices they didn't eat the food properly. In his room, as Kazuki is looking for the sewing kit, he grabs a photo of his, looks for a few seconds and puts it back. While sewing, he tells Ray he should act more like a father, but Ray in his defense says he spends time with Miri by playing games and stuff. Kazuki clarifies what he means is to help with more household stuff and take care of Miri. On the way home after buying groceries, Kazuki upon noticing a girl entering the cafe, for some reason quickly hides behind the wall and leaves. At home, Kazuki reflects on his daily activities and notices all he do is laundry, washing dishes, giving Miri a bath, and making food. And in all this, Ray won't do any of the household stuff and just plays games. During dinner, he sees them criticizing the food he made. He grabs the food and tells them they don't have to eat it if it's this bad. To make matter worse, they tell him to make a French toast. But in anger, Kazuki asks if he is their maid or what. After this, he goes to his room. The next day, it's raining again, and Mary tells Ray Papa to make her breakfast because she is hungry. Ray soon reads the letter left by Kazuki, stating he will come after a while. With no other choice, Ray gives cereal for breakfast and then quickly gets her ready for daycare. But when he drops her off, he finds out it's closed because today is Saturday. At the cafe, 
Kazuki shares his frustration over Ray being lazy and taking care of Miri. And also, how Miri needs to understand how much she needs him. Hearing him, Q says he has changed. He then tells Kazuki that his sister-in-law, Karen again came here yesterday. Q tells Kazuki it has been five years since the incident. He insists him to get over it and talk to Karen. But Kazuki just gets up and leaves. On one side, Ray is having a hard time managing things on his own. On the other side, Kazuki is having a lot of fun at the casino. After getting pretty drunk, on his way when he walks into a man, he gets pissed and picks up a fight. But ends up getting beaten up when two of his friends join in. Just then, Karen comes. After finally finding him, she tells him there is something she needs to talk to him about. But Kazuki refuses he doesn't want to. As he is leaving, Karen tells him she doesn't care what he does, but she doesn't need the money he has been sending to her. She tells him it's not his fault her sister died. But Kazuki says he is the one who killed her. As he leaves, we go back to five years ago, when Kazuki was on his mission, he was chasing a guy when the car slipped and hit an oil truck. And because Yuzuko was next to it, she came into the explosion, and along with their baby died. Because of all this, Kazuki believes it's his fault. The following day, Ray wakes up and finds out Miri's body is burning up. After checking her temperature he confirms she has a fever. He calls Kazuki, but he isn't picking up. So he tries to find the medicine but there aren't for kids. With no other option, he takes Miri to the hospital. On the other side, Kazuki visits Yuzuko's gravestone, where he also met her for the very first time. It's her death anniversary and that's why Karen has also come. As Karen also sits, she shares about going to France to study fashion. Yuzuko always supported her, and that's why she wants to continue pursuing fashion so she can respect her death. Similarly, she encourages Kazuki to forget about the past and pursue what makes him happy. But yet again, Kazuki refuses he doesn't want to. He is scared of change, of forgetting what he did and letting Yuzuko die. He fears if he did change, she might slip out of his memory. And he doesn't want to do that. Karen says, memories aren't a prison. If he only remembers Yuzuko with a sad face it will only make her sad. She encourages him to do something that will make Yuzuko happy. In a way, he doesn't have to fear about forgetting her. She heard from Q that he is taking care of his relative's kid and has gotten attached to her. She tells him that just like he made her older sister the happiest girl, she knows he can also make the little girl happy as well. Hearing this, Kazuki remembers his moment with Yuzuko and their child. While looking at the sunrise, he decides he should at least try. He returns home only to see the house messed up. He goes to Miri's room and finds out she had a fever. Seeing Ray was taking care of her, Kazuki is proud of him. After both of them wake up, they make a French toast for Kazuki. Kazuki grabs a bite and scolds them as they need to learn a lot in terms of cooking. But he is glad to see they at least tried. After this, Kazuki gave a new umbrella to Miri that he had bought. As Miri dances in enjoyment, we see Kazuki has taken the first step to a change. The following morning, Ray is ready to head out. He is greeted by Miri and tells Kazuki about going to his home. After he leaves, both Miri and Kazuki are glad because now they can do their secret mission. After some time, Ray arrives at his mansion. He enters the room, where he greets his father by calling him the boss. Shigeki is glad to see Ray hasn't forgotten his etiquette, considering he was living with a peasant like Kazuki. Now, the time has come and he wants Ray to return home to take over the organization. They are a noble family that has been assassins for generations. The only reason Shigeki allowed Ray to live outside was so he can have some fresh air. But now he will return because Ray was raised for only this purpose. To prove his loyalty to the organization, Ray receives a job to assassinate a traitor. Ray heads out and gets into the car, which is being driven by Ryo, the assassin from earlier. The target is Ray's former teacher Yagami, who betrayed the organization by falling in love. As it's against their organization's rule to develop any emotions for others, as a punishment his girlfriend has been disposed of. And now, it's his turn. By the time it's dark, Ray arrives at the location. 
Before he exits the car, Ryo tells him to ask about the traitor's last words. It's his hobby to collect them and would like to write them next to his girlfriends. Rei approaches Yagami. On seeing Rei, Yagami understands his girlfriend has been killed. He doesn't show any emotions and takes out the gun to attack. Rei quickly takes cover and shoots whenever he finds an opening. He follows him and is led to the upper floor. Rei's reflexes are great, but against his former teacher, it's not much. Rei is disarmed and is thrown off the floor. He dodges the bullet, and when the gun has run out of bullets, he goes after him to the roof while carrying a knife. They have a close combat battle, and it reminds them of their old times, in which Rei hasn't beaten him once. Yagami tells Rei that he thought Rei would change after he left the mansion three years ago, but even now, he is a mindless killer with no emotions, who only works for the organization and his boss. Rei asks why he betrayed the organization, he should have known it's against the law. Yagami says it's because he changed his way of life. He found someone he wanted to protect and cherish. But even she was taken away from him. Yagami lands a cut on Rei's hand and disarms him, but Rei quickly brings out a gun. While pointing the gun Rei says he has something to protect too. He heads butts him and shoots his leg. However, the rusty railing breaks. With this, Yagami with a smile falls down and dies. Ryo comes asking about his last words, but Rei refuses he didn't hear. After Ryo leaves, Rei sits by himself and asks himself if he is still the same. He receives a call from Kazuki asking him when he'll come, but Rei tells him he needs some time to cool off. He thinks back and realizes how many people he has mercilessly killed just on his father's orders. Rei wonders if he'll ever change. Just then, Kazuki comes and tells him to quickly get inside. Kazuki has put a tracker on Rei's phone that's why he was able to find him. On the way, Rei asks if he'll ever change. Kazuki tells him he has changed a lot. When he first met him, he was a total mess, a shut-in who looked like he had no purpose to live. But now, he is a lot better. Rei realizes maybe he did change. As they arrive home, Ray sees it's a celebration for his birthday. Mary wakes up, wishes him a happy birthday, and soon falls asleep. Seeing this, Ray for the first time smiles. At the cafe, Ryo enters and tells Q about the info requested by the boss on these two targets. The following day, Mary is working on improving her speed for the upcoming field day. After hours of practice, everyone goes to the cafe to relax. Miri invites Q uncle to the field day, but he refuses because there is some work he has to do. The scene shifts to the next day. While Kazuki is preparing a meal for the field day, Ray arrives with his whole face covered in dirt and asks if there's something he can help with. Kazuki freaks out and asks if he has a fever. Ray assures him he is fine, he just wants to do something for Miri, like making rice balls. Hearing this, Kazuki gets emotional. He never thought a day like this would come. Soon after, Mary wakes up and is amazed to see so many dishes. With this, she will have enough energy to win the race. The scene shifts to daycare, where every student along with their parents has arrived. After Mary goes to her friends, Kazuki and Ray go to the spot Ray has sealed early this morning. There are a lot of cameras, so Kazuki also brings out his professional camera. As the opening ceremony begins, the moment Mary comes up, Kazuki takes her photos with too much enthusiasm that leaves other parents in complete amazement. As the event begins, on one side where Kazuki tries his best to cheer Mary up, but on the other side, Ray just stays quiet and watches. During the break, Mary's friends and their mother are impressed to see how much tasty food Kazuki has made. Upon seeing their reaction, Ray doesn't have the courage to show his rice balls to Mary. But when Mary sees them, she wants to eat them. As Mary and her friends eats it, they find a chocolate cereal inside and it's incredibly tasty. On seeing this, Ray is happy. When the event resumes, it's Mary's turn to race, but she seems nervous. Kazuki tries his best to cheer her up, but she is still anxious. As the race begins, Mary tries her best to run fast. On seeing her trying her best, Ray doesn't stay quiet and with all his strength cheers her up. But as a result, Mary gets distracted and ends up falling. 
She quickly gets up but still comes in last. She apologizes to her papas and expresses she wanted to win the gold. Ray is in despair, feeling responsible for her loss. The next program is the parent and child race. Ray doesn't participate, so Kazuki and Mary go. The race involves multiple phases, with the first involving the children grabbing marshmallows from midair. Taiga and his father easily finish it and move on to sack racing. Miri and Kazuki quickly follow up, but due to Miri's restlessness, they end up falling. They quickly get up, but they are at the very last. They arrive at the third phase which is the scavenger hunt. In this, whatever the card has asked, the child has to bring that thing to the finish line. On reading the card, Miri goes straight to Rei and tells him to come with her. While holding both Rei and Kazuki's hands, she starts running to the finish line. Both of them lift Miri and run so fast that they easily overtake everyone and win the race. After the race, Rei asks what was on the card. Miri takes it out and shows, it said family. Kazuki is crying heavily, and Rei is also moved. After this, Anna sensei congratulates Miri and asks if they would like a family photo. Miri happily agrees, but Rei and Kazuki don't feel right to have a picture together, because if it's leaked they can get in trouble. However, seeing how eager Miri is, they agree and take the picture. On the way home, Kazuki tells Rei he is glad to see him changing so much. The scene shifts to the cafe, where Ryo gives the photos to Q and tells him to not forget his job. A few days later at the daycare, the students are practicing singing a song for Christmas. On the way to pick up Miri, Kazuki and Rei see Misaki standing in front of the gate. Misaki greets them and tells them she has come here to take back Miri. Kazuki is furious. He asks how dare she say this, when she has abandoned Miri and called her a burden. Misaki claims that she is Miri's mother and has every right. When Miri arrives on seeing her mother, she ends up hugging her instead of Kazuki. The scene shifts to home, where Miri is showing all the drawings she has made, her own room, the clothes and other toys her papas have bought for her. Since it has been so long, Misaki decides to make a hamburger for Miri. After buying the cheap steaks, she excuses herself for using their kitchen and starts preparing it. When it's made, Miri loves it very much. Afterwards, Miri requests her mama to sing with her in her upcoming Christmas song. But Misaki refuses. She apologizes but she doesn't sing for free. After Miri sleeps, Kazuki asks Misaki the reason she chose now to come here. Misaki shares that she can't sing anymore because her cancer is getting worse. As a result, she got fired, and her man left her. She was already going through much, that she finds the god to be cruel for making her life even worse. She doesn't have much longer to live, so she wants to make a fresh start with her daughter. After hitting rock bottom, she realized what's most important in life. She is going to make an honest living, and all she needs is her daughter back with her. Ray says there's a Christmas party coming up, and Miri is excited about it. Misaki understands it and is willing to rent a nearby apartment until then. She thanks them for taking care of her daughter but she also knows they are involved in dangerous work. As her mother, she can't let them take care of her anymore. If they consider themselves Miri's parents, they should not have any problems with this. After saying this, Misaki takes her leave. At the cafe, on knowing the situation, Q says he is the one who told Misaki about their address and occupation. He shows them the photo that Ryo took. Miri's presence in their lives has made their work sloppy, and the organization is considering removing the obstacle. That's why Q believes it's better for Miri to return to her mother and resolve this matter right here. Or if they go against the organization, Ray already knows the outcome of betrayal. Q knows this is the best outcome for everyone here. He reminds them that in the first place, they are the ones who killed her father. All of this was a happy dream, but it's time to wake up. The following day, Miri wakes up knowing they are going out to have fun. After waking up Ray, they get in the car and head out. Today, Kazuki wants to make sure both he and Ray don't leave any regrets behind. They arrive at the location and Miri is bursting out with excitement. Inside the mall, they do various activities and play multiple games. After having fun, 
Kazuki sends Misaki a message to come at 6 p.m. They have some rest, and Miri has some ice cream. She shares it with both of them and expresses how much fun she is having. After she finishes it, Kazuki wipes her face. On seeing someone's mother, Miri expresses she would have enjoyed it more if her mama had also come. Kazuki agrees and says that it would have been great. After this, they spend more time playing games and buying all the stuff Miri wants. At night, it's the climax, the Ferris wheel. It's Miri's first time, and seeing how pretty the city is looking, she is enjoying it very much. Kazuki asks Rei if they can still change and have normal happiness. He wants to see Miri smile, fight with friends, sing songs, and eat what he makes. But Rei replies he doesn't know. The fact they were able to have so much happiness is enough for someone like them. But now, it's time to wake up from the dream. After the Ferris wheel, Kazuki shows Miri her last surprise, a sleepover for just her and her mother. Miri is very happy and goes to her mother. As they are about to leave, Kazuki gives his muffler to her and tells her not to catch a cold. She bids them goodbye and says she will see them tomorrow. The following day, with no Miri in the home, Rei is playing games non-stop and continuously losing. After Kazuki tells him for how long he has been playing, Rei finally stops. He then goes to the bathroom and sleeps next to Miri's duck toy. On the other side, Kazuki goes to Miri's room and sees the painting she drew for Father's Day. She has made two ties and under it, she has thanked them for everything they have done for her. The next few days go by with Kazuki and Rei eating the cereals that Miri liked. Watching kids playing only to be suspected by others for being a shady person. Only eating junk food and watching Miri's favorite cartoon non-stop. Now that Miri is not here, Rei resumes his habit of smoking. He decides to take over the organization and tomorrow will head to his home. The following day on the other side, Misaki is trying her best to become a better mother by putting more effort into making what Miri likes. After practicing her song for Christmas, Miri asks her mama when her papas will come and get her. But Misaki tells her they are not her papas. She hugs Miri and apologizes for abandoning her. But she promises from now on she will try her best to become a better mother. The scene shifts to the mansion, where Rei announces his decision to take over the organization. Shigeki is glad to hear it and tells him from now on he will learn the way to lead the organization. But first, he needs to prove his loyalty to the organization by getting rid of these nuisances. Rei is in shock. He begs Shigeki to not do anything to them. In return, he'll kill anything and anyone he will order him to. But Shigeki won't listen. The fact Ray has developed emotions is a stain on their family's name. And if he doesn't get rid of these, he will deal with them in his own way. Ray leaves the room and immediately calls Kazuki. He tells him to quickly get Miri and leave this city. Kazuki in panic calls Q and asks for Misaki's address and phone number. After this, he calls Misaki but she is not picking up because someone has rang the bell. As she opens the door, Ryo shoots her. Misaki goes back to her room trying to prevent Ryo from going to Miri, but she is losing too much blood. Ryo asks what are her last words but just then, Kazuki comes and attacks. However, Ryo is too powerful for him and shoots at his left shoulder. He tells Kazuki to wait here until he writes Misaki's last words. But to his surprise, Kazuki has already called the police and soon the siren rings. After Ryo escapes, we see it is Q who disguised as the police. Kazuki holds Misaki and tells her to just hold on for a minute. But Misaki knows she doesn't have much time left. She requests Kazuki to take care of Miri. She will not be able to attend Miri's Christmas event as she promised, so she requests him to tell Miri her mama is very sorry. Before taking her last breath, Misaki asks to see her daughter. Once again, she apologizes to Miri for being a selfish mother. With this, Misaki dies. After this, they get in the car and head to a location selected by Q. They arrive at the safe house which not even the organization knows about. Soon, Ray also arrives and is filled up on the situation. Q apologizes for underestimating Shigeki because of which this happened. After he leaves, Kazuki decides they will wipe out all traces of Miri and make it look like she died. 
Then they will send her to an orphanage somewhere far away. As Misaki's last request, he believes this is the best solution to protect Miri. They belong to the underworld and can't take care of her. But Ray wants to take care of Miri. He asks what good it will do to abandon her. They killed her father and now her mother is dead. So now they are the only ones who can protect her. He tells Kazuki they can still change and find normal happiness. Hearing this, Kazuki remembers Karen's words. Just then, Miri wakes up and calls for her mother. Kazuki assures her she went out and will come sometime later. After Miri again goes to sleep, Kazuki tells on alternate days, they will pick her up and drop her off. The same goes for brushing her teeth after the bath. He will cook, and Ray will clean the house. Ray smiles and agrees. Kazuki and Ray inform their decision to Q. Earlier they were only pretending to be Mary's fathers, but now they are going to be her real family. The next day, Mary wakes up Ray, and yet again, the house is filled with pleasant noise. As promised, Ray is in charge of making breakfast, and Mary is assisting him. They prepare a French toast, and it gets a pass from Kazuki. After getting ready, they ask Miri what she wants for Christmas from Santa. But she tells them Mama has already told Santa what she wants. Upon arriving at the daycare, they greet Ana-sensei. Ana-sensei asks if Miri's mother will also be joining, but Kazuki refuses. Miri with a worried tone asks why she won't come even though she promised her. Kazuki tells her that Santa asked her to help distribute all the presents. So she has gone on a long trip and will take her time to return. Miri is sad to know this, but she asks if they will come to see her singing. Both of them promise they will. And to make sure it's not broken, Miri makes a pinky promise. After bidding goodbye to Miri, they meet up with Q, who gives them the things they have asked for. Kazuki requests Q to hand over presents to Miri if anything happens to them, but he refuses. He is done running errands for them and tells Kazuki to do it himself. What they are going to do is indeed reckless, but they also know no matter where they run, the organization will come after them. So it's better to face them and finish things right now. After an hour of traveling, they arrive at the mansion, where the guard thoroughly checks Rei and Kazuki. Afterwards, they tell Kazuki to stay out. Rei tells them he is his partner, but they remind him it's the boss's order and he has no right to order them. Just then, Ray takes down three guards, and Kazuki takes care of the last one. They take the car and drive inside the mansion. The guards are alerted and start firing at them. While ducking, they somehow avoid getting hit. Eventually, their car reaches its limit, but they arrive at the main building. Upon entering from the front door, the guards are there to shoot. So to make a way, they throw smoke bombs and then infiltrate taking down the guards. But just then, Ryo comes. He disarms Kazuki, and while pointing the gun at him asks for his last words. Just then, Rei comes and takes on Ryo. He dodges the shotgun and tells him he just needs to talk to the boss. But Ryo says a traitor has no right to talk. He throws Rei off the door and asks for their last words. Kazuki tells Ryo to come after him if he wants to know Misaki's last words. Ryo is so obsessed with people's last words, that instead of finishing Rei, he goes after Kazuki. Inside the kitchen, he shoots at Kazuki's legs and asks for Misaki's last words. Kazuki says it was the name of her beloved daughter. After knowing this, Ryo asks Kazuki his last words. But Kazuki takes out a cylinder and a lighter. Just then, Rei comes from the back but Ryo dodges and quickly disarms. He grabs Rei's neck. But before he does anything, Kazuki stabs him. After this, Rei headbutts him and Ryo falls over with the knife stabbed in his back. To finish him off, Kazuki throws the lighter and sets the kitchen on fire. After putting on the bandage, Rei tells Kazuki to prepare the getaway car as he needs to have a private talk with his father. He enters the room, and his father, with composure is sitting with a gun a foot away from his hand. Rei announces his decision to leave the organization. But Shigeki doesn't allow it and tells him to throw away his emotions. Rei says he won't. On hearing this, Shigeki grabs his gun to shoot, but Rei ends up shooting his father instead. 
Shigeki reminds him that even if he dies, the organization will pursue him as well as the people he is trying to protect. He is tied to their bloodline, and that is his fate. Rei thanks his father for teaching him the skills because of which he is alive in a world which is filled with darkness. But the time he spent away from his father made him realize that darkness walks hand in hand with light, and he learned many other things as well. Like living with an annoying mother-like roommate, the warmth that comes from sleeping in a single bed, taking care of a sick kid, and the view from the top of the Ferris wheel. There were so many things out there that he could hold dear. Shigeki tells him these are all unnecessary emotions, and he can't escape his fate. But Rei refuses and says it's not his fate. He shares more connections with Miri and Kazuki than he has with his own father. They showed him what true family is like. If his so-called killer's blood gets in the way of him protecting them, he doesn't need his hand. Now that he is worthless to him, Rei drops his gun and bids farewell to his father. Shigeki grabs his gun and points it at Rei, but doesn't shoot. Kazuki freaks out to see Rei's arm and gets to know he did it to himself. Now that this is solved, they have a much bigger worry, not upsetting Miri. On the other side, as the kids begin to sing, Miri is trying to search for her papas in the audience. With every passing second, she becomes sadder for not being able to find them. But when she sees them she becomes emotional as well as happy. After the event is done, she hugs them and wonders if her mother also heard it because she sang very loudly. They nod their heads and assure Miri that she definitely did. To wrap up the day, Anna Sensei takes a family photo. Ten years later, somewhere in a coastal area, Miri has grown up and now is a high school student. Rei and Kazuki stop their assassination and for the past ten years have been running a restaurant. Before heading to the school, Miri bids goodbye to her mama. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.